Hey there, this is Justin. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the visual script editor that is built into RPG in a Box. Uh, so let's say, for example, that we have a treasure chest that we want a player to be able to interact with and to, say, get an item from and then display a message to the player. Uh, before we get into scripting, we'll need to make sure that the interaction paths are properly set up in your map. I'll be using my example map to demonstrate this. As you can see here, there is a treasure chest. However, there are not any interaction paths to the tile that the chest is on. But we'll need to add those so the player can stand on the adjacent tiles and interact with it. So if you go up into edit mode, um, one way we can do this is to click on the tile that the chest is on, and then control click uh, the adjacent tile. And then if you right click, go to navigation slash interaction, and then interact only, It'll create, as you see, an orange line between the uh, adjacent tile and that tile that the chest is on. This will allow the player to stand on that adjacent tile and actually interact with the treasure chest. Uh, there's another way you can do this um, if you have these two tiles selected. Um, you can also hit the N key, and that will cycle through the different types of navigation and interaction. Um, as you can see up in the top left, uh, and the navigation legend uh, shows you the different types uh, that are available in the corresponding colors. I'm also working on this new connect mode that will be available in a future version. And with this connect mode, you can actually pick one of the navigation or interaction types um, from the top left. For example, interact only. And then you can actually paint those paths directly onto the map instead of having to use the right-click menu uh, to set the type or using the N key, you can just paint them directly onto the map. So now that we have these interaction paths set up, the player will be able to stand on the adjacent tiles and interact with the treasure chest. Uh, now, one of the options we could have went with for this treasure chest was to simply make it a container and just put an item in it. Um, you can go into edit mode, right-click on it, and then go to Properties, and you can check uh, the item container box, uh, and then pick one or more items to add to the container. Um, this will simply um, just open an, an item container window when the player interacts with it. Since this video is about scripting, though, we're going to do something a little more interesting. Instead of making it an item container, we're actually going to create a script for the treasure chest. Um, that triggers some additional functionality, for example, playing animation uh, when the player interacts with the chest. Um, so what we want to go ahead and do is right-click on the chest again, and go to Properties, and then uncheck the item container box since we're going to add our own script to the treasure chest. So let's go ahead and save the map, and then we'll move on to creating the script for a chest. So go ahead and click the New button up on the toolbar, pick Script for the type, and then we'll call this Treasure Chest, and then click OK. The main area of the script editor here is where you'll be building your script. Uh, you can see you have a Start node um, that indicates where your script is going to begin. You'll always uh, start with one of those. Um, you can click on the title bar and drag a node around uh, to adjust the position of it. The palette on the left is a list of the functions that you can add into your script. Um, if you click on one, it'll show a description of what that function does um, down the box below. One of the things that we'll want our script to do is to play an animation uh, for the treasure chest. Um, for the chest model that I have here, you can see that there is an uh, open animation that I've defined uh, that actually opens the chest. Um, so we want that to, to be triggered when the player interacts with the treasure chest. So what you can do is, uh, on the left, if you find the play animation function and double click on it, it'll add that into the script, um, as you can see. So you can drag that up here next to our start node. And if you left click and drag, you can make a connection between those two nodes. And as you can see at the bottom, the source code for the script uh, gets updated in real time as you modify the script visually. Um, so you can see there are some parameters that you can specify for uh, each of the functions in your script. In this case, we have an entity that we want the animation to be played for, um, which we use self in this case because we want the chest itself to play animation. 
and then we want it to play the animation named open. And you can see the source code down there was updated to reflect those changes. We also want an item to be given to the player, so find the give item function, double click it to add it to the script, and then drag it up next to our play animation script, and once again make a connection between those two nodes. You can then pick an item from the list of available items in your dropdown. For this we'll just leave it on skeleton key. And then we also want a message to be displayed to the player to indicate that they've gotten an item. So add the display message and connect the two nodes. And then we will say, you find a skeleton key in the chest. So if you follow the script now, you'll see that it will play an animation, uh, give an item to the player, and then display a message. So let's go ahead and save our script. And now that our script is ready, we will want to go back to our map editor. And in our map, go into edit mode, and then right-click our treasure chest, go to properties. And then from the script drop-down, we'll want to find the script that we just created, uh, which we named treasure chest, select it, and click close. And as you can see, it put a little script marker icon uh, indicating that we have a script on our chest now. So now if the player interacts with the chest, the game will execute that script that's attached to it. So we'll go ahead and save our map now. And then we'll also go ahead and export the game and we will try out the script that we just attached to see how it works. Now in the game, if you walk over next to the chest and click on it, as you can see, the open animation played, uh, the player was given a key, and our message was displayed. If you click the chest again, you can see we have a problem, though. The player can keep getting keys from the chest as many times as they want. Next, we'll look at a way we can fix that problem. So I'll show you a way we can fix our problem. Um, first thing we'll want to do is disconnect our existing nodes. If you click on an input and drag away from it, it will disconnect that. And then you can control click to select all the nodes and move them out of the way for now. What we're going to do is use the set entity property function to store a value with the treasure chest uh, to remember whether or not it's been opened yet. So go ahead and double click on the set entity property function and drag it next to our play animation node be using this to store a value that will evaluate uh, at a different point in our script. The entity property can be left as self so it stores the value with that treasure chest. Uh, the property name we will call it opened and then we also want to set a value. On the current version this edit button is not here you can just enter a value directly into that text field. So you could just type yes or true directly into the text field underneath property value. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and just use the boolean since that's available and we'll set it to true. We just need to remember which value we chose uh, since we'll be looking for that value in our evaluate condition node um, and that will determine which uh, path the script will take. So go ahead and connect that node to the play animation node and then we'll double click on evaluate condition to add an evaluate condition node to our script. We'll drag that up next to the start node since that's the first thing we want to do is evaluate whether or not the chest has been opened. Go ahead and connect the start node to the evaluate condition node and then here's where we'll actually be checking the property that we stored click on the edit button. We want to check a self property and see if it equals a string value. Now if you're using the current version you'll just want to check for that string that you entered into your property value. Also make sure you change the property name to opened 
And in my case, since I actually set my property value to boolean of true, I'd want to actually put that in here instead of a string. Click OK. So now when the script starts, it's going to check the object that the script is attached to uh, for a property called opened and see if that's true. So now we need to connect up our other nodes. So let's select all of those and move those out of the way for now. So we have some more room. And then deselect all of them. We have all of our nodes along the bottom uh, that will trigger if the chest has not been opened. Uh, we also want something to happen if the chest has already been opened. So let's display a message to the user. So we'll add that in and connect that up to the then. And we'll display a message that says the chest is empty. And then we'll connect the else to our original nodes along the bottom. So those will be triggered if the opened property hasn't been set to true yet. So the first time the player interacts. You can see the updated source code at the bottom, uh, which is good if you want to get familiar with uh, the language itself. If we uh, review our script here one more time, when it starts, it evaluates a condition. It looks for a property on the object of opened. And if that's true, it's going to display a message to the player indicating that the chest is empty. Uh, if it's not been set to true, then we're going to set that property to true so we know that it's opened. Then we're going to play the open animation on the chest. We're going to give an item to the player and display a message. If you export the game and launch it again, you'll see now that the script will only trigger once. So if you try to open the chest again, it will just display our message about the chest being empty. When the script is triggered the first time, our value of true is stored in the opened property for the chest. Next time the player interacts with it, the evaluation node sees that it's true, so the empty chest message is displayed, instead of giving a key to the player again. The scripting in RPG Box is still pretty early in development, so there's not a whole lot you can do at this time, but there's a lot more to come. Alright, well thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.